It is strawberry season here and we are trying to take advantage of the fleeting harvest. Contacting all of our local no spray sources, squirreling some away for winter, but also making sure we are eating plenty of fresh treats. I need to use up the round of strawberries that are in the fridge right now before they go bad, so today I'm going to be making three strawberry recipes and bring you all along with me. first recipe I'm going to be making is strawberry thyme lemonade. This has been on my blog for a few years now, you guys have even seen me make it here on YouTube before, but it's worth mentioning again. Strawberry lemonade alone is delicious, but adding a hint of thyme gives it a unique flavor that I love. Basil or mint are also delicious alternatives for this recipe. This is a really simple method. All I'm doing is adding one cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, a handful of strawberries, a couple of thyme leaves, and about one third to a half a cup of cane sugar to a blender. When you blend this up, you have yourself a lemonade concentrate. I add the concentrate to a glass pitcher and stir in about five to six cups of filtered water. But this is completely customizable. I like my lemonade pretty strong, but you can sweeten it and water it down to your liking. This is Rube. He has spent the past few years in a raised bed in our back garden, but he was not doing too well. So this spring we moved him to our edible landscaping in the front yard, and now he is thriving. I don't want to pick too much from Rube this year in order to allow him time to get established and strong, but he was looking so much better so I couldn't help but pick a few stalks. I'm going to combine the rhubarb and strawberries in a saucepan with a little bit of sugar to make a simple fruit spread. I'm very picky when it comes to fruit preserves. They must be sweet enough to take away any tartness, but not too sweet that the sugar overpowers the flavor of the fruit. Typically, you're going to find that most jams and jellies call for about one or two cups of sugar per pound of fruit. I think that's ridiculous. We usually end up using only about a fourth a cup per quart or pound of fruit.
this come to a boil starting out on very very low heat so the strawberries release their juice and nothing burns once it's boiling I will turn it down to a simmer until all the fruit is broken down and thickened a bit While my preserves are simmering, I'm going to get an iron corn strawberry cobbler going. This is such an easy recipe and can be made with whatever fruit is in season or that you have stored up in the freezer. For the cake, I creamed a fourth a cup of salted butter with half a cup of cane sugar, added in two eggs, one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of vanilla, an eighth a teaspoon of salt, and one and one third cup of all-purpose einkorn flour. This is a half batch that I'm making in a pie pan, so you'll want to double these measurements for a 9 by 13. Once the batter was spread into a greased baking dish, I sprinkled about two cups of fresh strawberry slices on top and then sprinkled that with a couple tablespoons of sugar.
popping that in the oven at 325 for about 40 to 50 minutes and it looks like the preserves are done as well. Now keep in mind there is no added pectin so this isn't going to be like a jam consistency but it will thicken more as it cools enough to be spread on toast. You can also use preserves in oatmeal, yogurt parfaits on top of ice cream. The possibilities are endless. The cobbler is done and I am serving it with my maple whipped cream that is a recipe in my Peace and Plenty ebook and some more fresh strawberries. You can pair this with vanilla ice cream as well or simply enjoy it on its own with a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. 